Hey guys, my name is Alex Barham. Uh, today we're going to review the Piranha 9R2. Uh, for those of you who follow my stuff, I am the Whitewater Ambassador for Mountain Man Outdoors. Um, check out in the description below. I'll have a link to where you can go check out our stuff. Um, yeah, I review a lot of boats. I test out a ton of boats. Um, this so far has been the hardest review for me to try and put together. Um, and I'm going to be forthright and try to explain to you why, um, because a, I'm not in it for the money. I don't get paid to do any of this stuff and B, um, I don't do this just to sling boats. I do this, uh, to try and give people honest feedback and useful information. So with that said, um, let's dive in the nine R two is a follow-up to the 9R, which at the time that it came out uh, was designed by Jared Sarasolsa, so Annual's big brother. Uh, and Piranha put this boat out to go out there and crush the sick line race uh, out in Austria, Germany. And it did that. But what it also did was bring in a new era in how we even look at creaking. You know, up until this point, Boats like the Stomper had been made to just boof. The Nomad had been made to have like a ton of rocker and go places where we weren't able to go before. But we had never had a boat that was designed to be super fast and super carvy and just skip out and blow over stuff. Um, well, once we had that weapon, we were able to just totally rewrite the script on how we paddled the same rivers we had always paddled, how we attacked big water, and it just led to a revolution. So five years on now, as Piranha releases the 9R2, uh, they have not only a high bar that they set for themselves to clear, but so many other people already had to take a shot at that bar, releasing their own go-fast nine-foot boat. Um, so it really kind of begs the question of how does it stack up? Well, let's start from where everything else started and compare the 9R2 to the 9R. Um, first thing we did was throw them together on the grass and have a quick look. Obviously, a lot more volume has been added to the deck uh, and a lot of the kind of banana shape has been flattened off on the 9R2. Uh, this is definitely a good thing. The boat reemerges after you uh, get submerged in a very consistent, very quick manner. And um, without completely changing the feel of the boat, Piranha was able to kind of give it a lot more um, pop and pep uh, just by adding above the waterline. Um, the stern, you'll also notice, has been flared out significantly. It's sort of more of a coming with the times of what everyone else has kind of been doing uh, in terms of uh, more edge control and uh, less sym symmetry like in the original 9R. Um, but the, the real thing that's different about the 9R2 to what everyone else has done comes in the front of the boat. Uh, Right away, we noticed something that we hadn't seen before in a lot of the promo photos, which was this interesting V cut into the bow. Uh, I think the theory here was that it would help kind of um, deflect the boat catching waves or maybe allow you to drop an angle coming off a booth and really like carve into stuff. Um, none of that really worked for me. <laughs> Uh, which gets to why I've had such a hard time putting this review out. Uh, I, I, you know, usually I'm not doing this after just two weeks in a boat. Um, but I had to accept the reality that, you know, before this boat came out and Piranha released, you know, an article talking about it, they put in that article a photo of them prototyping with a kid that looked like he weighed 150 pounds soaking wet um, doing the, the test paddling. And I was concerned. I think I mentioned it that in my 
nine R review a couple months ago. Um, well, rightfully so. Um, I am sitting here at like 201, 202 pounds and you're going to need to be like 185 max to paddle this boat. Probably maybe 190. Uh, the people who paddled it who were 190 felt like it was, uh, just overloaded. So for me being like 15 pounds above that guesstimated target weight, I had a lot of problems trying to paddle this boat. Um, and it, it comes back to this, this feature, uh, which they tried to build in, which was adding a lot more width at the seat and going towards the knees into the bow um, than there is in the stern. And I think what Piranha was trying to do was to really focus in on taking aggressive, like jumping booths out either early over stuff or not having as much stern to sink into curtains and kind of get good late booths. Um, and then when you do land, having all of that width and volume there to cause you to skip out in a way. Now they crushed that. And I'm sure that in testing, uh, with a, a good paddler at the right weight range, it does that. However, that was just, yeah, that was my experience. Uh, and it was cool, but it didn't make up for the fact that all of that will work backwards against you if you're too big for this boat. So, um, I will probably put together an entire carnage reel just because I did a season's worth of crashing in like, two weekends, uh, at least at the rate I usually do it. Um, just trying to make this boat work on a pushy river running creaky kind of feature. Um, I had an incredibly hard time making this boat do aggressive ferries. It, once it locked onto a current, it was very hard to release cool thing though, which was that if you didn't want to get eddied out when you were blazing and trying to race, you could kind of like do some slalom jujitsu and not get pulled in, which was fun. So getting to know, the more you get to know this boat, the more you will get out of it. Um, and even being 15 pounds over, the more I paddle it, the more I do like it and the more I do get out of it, but it's still an unsurmountable, uh, just problem for me, uh, that, Hopefully they will put out a 9R2 large. Um, and I, at that point, I would paddle one of these for the whole season. Because uh, it's the theory is sound. Um, but yeah, it was just a really frustrating two weeks trying to make it work uh, as was. So I don't know what to tell you guys. Um, I think that if you're in the target weight range of like 160 to, well... 165 to 185, you should go for it. And you should definitely demo one of these before you buy it. Um, hopefully we see in another year, uh, a large version of this boat. Definitely. Um, there are some things that I would want to see like different, uh, maybe get rid of that weird V notch thing in the bow. Cause it didn't help me at all. Um, but overall solid boat. If you're a British sized person. So, um, that said though, um, you know, the outfitting that they're putting into these boats has to get better. Uh, this outfitting hasn't changed since I've been in boating in any real form. Um, it gets super annoying when you're dealing with ratchets that don't work, drain plugs that fall apart and go missing and no other drain plug will go in there. Um, so hopefully by the time the 9R large does come out, Piranha will have figured out sizing that works for American dudes and spent a little bit more money on making better outfitting. Thanks.